there! Happy Thanksgiving Eve to those of you in the U.S. who celebrate. I am Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, and this is Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 218. I'm coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. Let me say hi to a few of you folks before I jump into tonight's broadcast. Hi, Mulan, Karen, Chris, Myrtle, Jerry Lynn. Hi, Kelly. Aw, thank you for all the happy Thanksgiving wishes. Hi, Ava, Lynn. I've got a different setup, so I'm looking in a different spot right now. Hi, Stella, Teresa, Minerva. I saw Debbie was on there as well. Hello, hello. Welcome. I cannot believe we are in Thanksgiving week. Um, Papa Pixie apologizes. He is en route. He will probably arrive here um, just after the live broadcast, so we wanted to make sure that I said hello to you all. Normally, when he's here, he pops his head on, but traffic had its own plans tonight, as usual, trying to come into the city of Atlanta. So, in tonight's broadcast, I am going to be sharing two projects using the Evergreen Elegance Bundle. I've got a really cool fancy fold for you and a really quick and easy treat holder. I do have a few things I want to share with you tonight about um, a Black Friday sales for Stampin' Storage. As many of you know, I'm an affiliate for them. I obviously love all of their stuff. It's how I sort and organize most of my Stampin' Up! products. I'll share a couple details about that. And next week on December 1st starts the Last Chance sale. So I will be sharing details about that on my blog as well. So let me share a couple of things really quickly. I know we're coming up on the end of the month. Um, I have three free gift choices this month if you place an order of $50 or more with me. The Baker's Twine Essential Pack, Paper Snips, which seems to be the leading favorite of those of you that have um, earned the free gift. That's what most of you have chosen. Or a Stampin' Blends Combo Pack in the color of your choice. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like complimentary copies of our current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request with me at thepaperpixie.com slash happymail. I will be ordering the new uh, January to June 2022 mini catalog. I'm ordering those on December 1st. So if you have placed an order with me in the last six months, you're automatically on my mailing list for that. I will be switching over my catalog request page on December 1st. So if you haven't ordered from me in a while or you're new, you can certainly request the new catalog that way. So that is that. Let me show you um, stamp and storage. This is my affiliate link here specifically for the sale. So the paperpixie.com slash SNSBF21. So that's Stampin' Storage Black Friday 21. And um, starting on the 22nd through the 29th, so for the whole week, they are offering 15% off everything and free shipping on orders over 100, which is really amazing. And they've got some Black Friday door busters and a midnight special. I had to take some notes because I want to make sure you know about these because Stampin' Storage, they do it right. So for the Black Friday midnight special, the three-tier paper holder is going to be available at 20% off using coupon code MIDNIGHT21. If you visit that link, the paperpixie.com slash SNFBF21, you'll see all the details about the two Black Friday sales. There, that is only from midnight to 5 a.m. Central Time, 20% off the three-tier tier paper holder. That is a mouthful. And then from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Time, they are offering, this is these are like my favorite things ever, the eight and a half by 11 paper holder, the 12 by 12 paper holder, the eight and a half by 11 max, which mine is a slightly modified, but it's essentially this one. Um, I love these for the Ikea and then all punch holders. So I do store my punches in those as well. Those are 20% off from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Time. This is on Friday using coupon code BF2021. I think there may be some more deals coming, so stay tuned. I've got some... Um, if you check out my Facebook page, I've got details about those as well. So I think that is it. I've got some show and tell from the kiddos. I'll show you my projects for tonight first as a little sneak peek. I don't think I've forgotten to share anything with you. So yeah, December 1st, stay tuned. Keep your eye on my blog um, for all the information about uh, the last chance list. It's always hard to sort of digest what's staying, what's going, all that good stuff. So. Let me flip the camera here. 
turn this on I think we're good these are the projects we're doing tonight this again is the evergreen elegance bundle it's a punch bundle so it's a great price I want to say it's forty dollars and oh, show us the things you are talking about um, Denise yep so I think because if I step out of the way for a second they may come in focus <laughs> Um, the best place for you to see that Denise is at Stampin Storage. So if you'll follow my affiliate link, you could even just go to the paperpixie.com slash SNS for Stampin Storage. And that is the best place to see pictures and what's on sale and all that good stuff. So you'll be able to see Brett does it great, great photos, measurements, you can figure out exactly what fits in your space. So their website is the best place to do that. And obviously when I do do my, uh, craft room tour and sometime in the future I will talk about all of those things in more detail as well and show you how I'm using it so this is the evergreen elegance bundle it's on page 91 of the annual catalog they sprinkled in some amazing Christmas products for us in the annual catalog this is a classic Christmas set I love the exterior and interior sentiments it's forty dollars and fifty cents as a bundle and that is a border punch as well as a red rubber stamp set so this is one of those corner flip cards I'm gonna show you how to make that really easy I want to give a shout out to Julie Davison I've seen lots of demonstrators sharing it I grabbed measurements from her so Julie thank you and then this is a slider treat box I'm calling it the evergreen elegance nutty buddy <laughs> slider treat box so inside is one of the little Debbie look at how cute these are it's a nutty buddy it's a single and it's nutty buddy North Pole nutty buddy and they're little singles you get 10 in a box really cute and this box is really easy to make so love a good slider box I think um, the most recent slider box I made was for a little mini Hershey's bar but um, this is great because it only uses just under a quarter of a sheet of cardstock so you can get four of them out of a sheet of eight and a half by eleven let me show you the kids show and tell first and then we'll jump right into the projects Lily has practiced with origami but she decided to create to take the origami paper and make uh, snowflakes so we have I don't know a 12 inch pile of snowflakes that she's been working on they're out of school this week they're on um, Thanksgiving break so um, you know her she's always got to be creative but this was the snowflake she chose to show you I did she's been folding them um, instead of diagonally straight like uh, horizontal and perpendicular I am doing a but let me caveat that Maria I am planning to do a paper and ribbon share for the holiday cat or for the mini catalog but I need to find out um, if we're gonna have some challenges getting some of those products so I am hopeful that I can do my product shares so stay tuned for that I will have information I'll let you know one way or the other just depending on product availability because as you all know global supply chain issues are a challenge for everybody so we will I should know more um, right around December 1st so stay tuned for that so that's Lily's show and tell and I was told not to break this but Nolan got a new Lego set so he made a um, look at all the Kona hair on the <laughs> There's hair all over <laughs> but this is Nolan's fire truck that he put together yesterday really really cute that kid loves Legos so he had saved up some money from a couple of birthday gift um, returns and that's what, that's what he chose to get so all right we are gonna start with the card here now I got to give a shout out Papa Pixie's not watching but this little ribbon trick I'm sure you guys from way back in the day have done this before with ribbon this 100% reminds me of my mom Pixie she used to take um, Christmas cards that we would get throughout or each holiday and she'd trim them down and turn them into little mini gift cards or like gift enclosure cards and we always did these little ribbon um, I don't even know what they're called but you just do two hole punches and then wrap the ribbon and it's kind of like a faux ribbon there the bow is actually just made because of the two hole punches so I'm going to show you that tonight but that's a little bit of nostalgia for me because we made those bows so often at the holidays with upcycling Christmas cards so this is called a corner flip card and I'm not sure if you can tell but this is actually it is literally flipped we're gonna make some cuts in the cardstock in a way that when we pull the I'll show you when we do this but when we pull the corner and flip it it basically creates this such cool fancy fold here 
I've seen this done multiple ways where you actually just diagonally score it and fold it backwards. But this is a really cool trick and I've got a tip for you on the paper trimmer as well because I was struggling and needed to come up with a solution. So I will share that with you. But this is that awesome evergreen border punch using that specialty. It's the gold and rose gold six by six specialty paper. And I'm laughing because I've loved the gold so much that I am literally um, on slim pickings left. So I've got enough for tonight's live stream, but I do want to caveat. I know you guys expect to have um, shortened tutorials from me. I am going to be taking the rest of this week off just to enjoy time with the kids and my dad being in town. So you won't see any blog posts from me. I just kind of took this week off because um, it's kind of hard to manage having kids on at the same time. I did take the week off the day job, but I will likely share details about these projects next week. So stay tuned for that. I want you all to enjoy time with your families as well this week. So um, we are going to start with a, uh, a normal size base of cardstock as I'm throwing things around. We're going to do eight and a half by five and a half and I'm trying to grab Let's see. Eight and a half by five and a half. That is just a half sheet of, of cardstock. This is uh, evening evergreen to go with evergreen elegance. Let me show you that bundle really quickly. I know I showed it to you in the catalog, but here is that evergreen border punch. And the evergreen elegance stamp set. It is a red rubber set, so it's really wonderful to work with. And we're using, let's see, five of the stamp sets on tonight's projects. So that's the punch bundle. I'm going to show you how to use that border punch as well. Thank you. Brian is next to me watching for your questions, and he's also keeping me from dropping my stuff everywhere. All right, so I did a little bit of, um, what do you call that? I added post-it tape. So I use this a lot to use uh, to hold dies in place when I run them through the stamp and cut and emboss machine. And I did a strip that was about five and a half inches long. You see that there? And then I just cut it lengthwise because I didn't need it to be that wide. And I put that there so that I can actually see the measurements because when you're trying to cut using Evergreen Elegance, it's uh, very difficult to see. Deanne, that is a great question. I will tell you that just about every one of my 3D projects I created with eight and a half by 11. Um, and mainly that's because Stampin' Up! only sells the 12 by 12 with the exception of basic white and very vanilla in um, combo packs. So you have to get a whole color family. I just don't usually use the 12 by 12 that often. So I try to always make my projects from an eight and a half by 11. So, um, because the eight and a half by 11, you can buy a whole pack of one color. All right. So here's what we're going to do. And I'll show you like when I had, when I didn't have the post-it tape there, I could not see those measurements and we need to be able to see measurements because we're going to make cuts in the center of the cardstock. So we're first going to score again, this is five and a half by eight and a half along the eight and a half inch side. I'm going to line this up at four and a quarter. We're basically just scoring this in half. Okay. And then I'm going to slide this to the right to three. So we want the left edge lined up at the three inch mark. And I got to look at my notes really quickly. So I don't, let's see, which side of the paper is it on? <laughs> All right. So with the left edge there at the three inch mark, I'm going to take the cutting, uh, the cutting tool, and we're going to start it at two and a half. So I actually keep my finger underneath the tray here or the cutting arm, and I'm going to line up this to two and a half. Now, um, there are lines, and there's also a little arrow here on the trimmer. Let me see if I can zoom in here and close that. I'm lining up that line at two and a half. Is that coming through clear? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to cut then, keep it making sure I'm not moving anything. We're going to cut down to four and seven eighths. So I'm going to keep it zoomed in here, but I'm going to slide down to four and seven eighths. Now I'm putting pressure on the cutting arm. That's going to hold my cardstock in place. And I'm stopping that line then at four and seven eighths. Okay. Now we can lift this up and you'll see we've just made a cut right in the center of the cardstock. I always go the wrong direction when I zoom. We're going to rotate it a quarter of a turn 
clockwise and lining up that left edge again at three inches. Now this cutting tool, we're gonna line up at three inches. I think you can see that. And we're gonna cut up to five eighths. That is just before going in this direction. What's that? I'm a little bit out of view. Hold on. Thank you. That 5 eighths mark is just before the half inch because we're going up, if that makes sense. So let me repeat those measurements again. On the long side, we line up the left edge at three and we cut from two and a half down to four and seven eighths. Then I rotated it a quarter of a turn clockwise. And then we cut from three inches up to five eighths, okay? So we have this piece right in the center there, okay? And that's a little trick. I'm probably gonna leave that post-it tape right there on my cutting arm for when I'm using dark cardstock and I can't see those measurements. Let me make sure I'm, all right, zoomed all the way out. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is just fold and burnish on that center score line. I moved everything around here. And then here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna pop this out. We want this, the, this corner to go in and we're gonna flip it. So we're gonna go like this. See that? And the cardstock's gonna naturally fold where we want it to. I'm just making sure that this is parallel to the folded edge here. Zoom that in a little bit. And then what we can do is come in and burnish. But I mean, how cool is that? I love this fancy fold. Okay, so we did those cuts right in the center and then we flipped it like this. Okay. I keep going the wrong direction. Sorry to make y'all dizzy. All right, so there's that. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of liquid glue. You could use a glue dot, you could use tear and tape, you could use um, stamp and seal. And I'm just gonna run liquid glue. I've got a bottle running on empty as usual and I'm just sticking to the edge there but going from that diagonal to that diagonal and then I can just fold this down you want to stay to the edge because there's only a little bit of space here that the glue can adhere to and then I just come in and make sure that this gets all burnished got a little extra got a little heavy on my glue there all right, so that is the basics of the corner flip card. Now we can start to layer in our layers. So layers are real easy. I've got for the inside of the card, this is four by five and a quarter. That's a piece of basic white. I've got a strip of that specialty paper. This is just one and a quarter by six. I'm gonna show you how to use that. Then I've got a two and three quarters by two and three quarters piece of cherry cobbler, because I love how that looks with evening evergreen. And then a two and a half by two and a half of basic white, okay? And then the last piece of basic white, this is gonna be for our sentiment on the front, that is just under three quarters. I like to cut it just a hair less than three quarters to fit in the, which builder punch is it? Or the banners pick a punch and then by four and a quarter. So just under three quarters by four and a quarter, okay? Let's do, let's do the inside first, okay? I am gonna start with Evening Evergreen and this evergreen tree. I'm gonna do some stamping on the inside, which is not usual for me, but I'm warming up to it. <laughs> I know so many of you are like, no naked insides and no naked envelopes. I'm just gonna stamp that in the lower left corner. This is our inside panel. Love that evening evergreen and the texture of that tree. And then our inside sentiment this one says, may the beauty of the season bring you joy and warm memories to cherish throughout the year. We're going to do that cherry cobbler. Make sure I've got that going the right way. And 
let's hope that it's straight. If not, we just flip our cardstock. That's why cardstock's double-sided. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, very smart, Kathy. Thanks for sharing that. I typically just try to burnish on the back <laughs> to sort of hide the shiny marks, but that's a great suggestion. Thank you. All right, so that's the inside. Go ahead and glue this one down. Now, if you were going to make a whole bunch of these for your Christmas cards, I would just set them up on the Stamparatus, and then you can always get it in the right spot. So, Charlotte, it all depends on the, um, the detail of the stamp. So I found, or I shouldn't say I found, Stampin' Up! determines uh, whether the stamp images will b work better with photopolymer or red rubber. And they, that's sort of how they choose that way. I think the more detailed ones typically are red rubber, although they've started to do some of the distinctive, which are very detailed and sort of shaded, they've started to do that with our um, photopolymer as well. So that's the inside. I just glued that to the inside. And then let's do our, we'll do the border. I'm gonna do this in different order here. All right, so with the border punch, here's what I like to do first. You'll see that there's silver paint printed on this. That is to help you sort of punch a whole row of these evergreen trees. I like to flip it over. I like the, the side of the paper that I want um, facing up. I put that facing up when I'm looking at this punch. But I'm going to flip this over and I'm actually going to start this at one edge. So I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just coming in and taking the edge of my paper and starting there. I want to make sure that everything is lined up and pushed in all the way and then punch. Okay, so that started it right there on the edge. Then all you need to do is to line this up with the trees here. So I'm going to bring this up close so you can see that. See how I'm lining that those trees up in the paint. That's going to ensure that we've got this lined up where the next four trees should go. And then we're just going to keep sliding it down. And you'll kind of know if you've gone too far. But lining up those trees again and punching. And then we've got a whole strip of evergreen trees. How awesome is that? It, uh, the post-it tape, yes, it is low tack. I will say it's a little bit more tackier than regular post-it notes. I found that, so you can reuse it quite a bit. All right, so that, we're gonna bring this back because I'm gonna use, you know what, while we're here, let me just do the other one for our other project if I can find. Oh, it's right here. We'll do it twice while we have it out. So we'll get lots of practice. So same thing, I'm gonna line that up. The edge. Now you could punch it in the middle as well. I just find it's easier to work with if we do it this way. And then just lining up in the paint. Yay. I do love this paper. All right, so we're gonna put one of these aside. That's for our 3D project. And then this guy, bringing back our card base, I'm gonna kinda of just center this on the bottom of the card here. Um, okay, so the post-it tape, Barbara, I, find, I personally feel like washi tape is tackier. Um, I have a harder time pulling washi tape up when it's gone through the stamp and cut and emboss machine than I do with post-it tape or post-it notes. And again, that's not like the super sticky. I think that's what they're called, super sticky post-it notes. I don't use those at all. So I'm just kind of eyeballing this here. I'm gonna line up. Oh, this is the gold and rose gold six inch by six inch specialty paper. It's on page it's hidden because you guys probably I've talked about this before because um, it's really hidden on a page. So let me see if I can find it again. I always forget the page number. There it is. Page 135. And literally, that's it. <laughs> like That's all you get to see of it. Golden Rose Gold Metallic Specialty Paper. 
or golden rose gold six by six metallic specialty paper. The item number, if you've got a pen and paper, is 156844. It's $5 and you get eight sheets, four of each color. It's got a really cool um, textured pattern to it as well. It's almost like a, a fabric type textile is what it looks like. And I think it's just uh, metallic fibers on a white core. All right, so I'm just going to be lining this up, kind of centering it. We're going to trim off excess, but I'm only going to put glue. I'm putting glue on all the trees except for the two on the outsides, or I should say the four on the outside. So I just kind of go up each of the trees. We'll glue this down the same way on the treat holder. And then just a little bit right down. And then we'll just eyeball it again liquid glue kind of lets us slide things into place it dries clear can use adhesive remover and I probably was a little heavy-handed with my glue but I'm just gonna flip that upside down and press okay um, the old no they will not have the creative crates on sale Terry on Friday Friday's sale is just the um, the midnight sale and the doorbuster sale um, and I'm trying to remember, it was the three-tier paper holder from midnight to 5 a.m. Central Time, and then all the punch holders, and then the um, 8 half by 11 12 by 12 and then the 8 half by 11 Max for Ikea. Those are a mouthful. All right, so I'm just going to come here, and I'm trimming just right along the edge of the cardstock, and then the same thing right along the edge of... So we've got that beautiful... Love that gold border of evergreen trees. You could save these guys for another project if you wanted. They'd be really pretty sort of layered together. All right, so let's work on this panel first. I've just got a piece of our small grid paper, um, but the, obviously the larger grid paper works as well. We're going to do the evergreen bows, bows. How do you pronounce that? B-O-U-G-H. Bows or bows? <laughs> you probably can say it either way. I'm asking Brian, and it's kind of funny because he has his own pronunciations for things. One of the many things I love about him. All right, so I'm just going to stamp one going up. And then I'm going to flip it and one going down. And you'll just have a little bit of overhang. That's why I've got the grid paper. So we got that. And then I do not use the other end of the glue, Loretta. That is actually the purpose of that is to do a broad tip of glue. And I actually, I never use it. <laughs> because I just I've tried it before and I just couldn't get the hang of it I like the control of the fine tip for sure um, all right so we've done that I'm gonna layer this onto our real red and let me show you how to do that ribbon not real red cherry cobbler so again we've got the basic white two and a half by two and a half Cherry cobbler, two and three quarters by two and three quarters. All right, so I, um, I, did, I eyeballed this, but if you wanted to, I'm lining up my ruler here. I'm going to grab a pencil, and I'm just going to make little marks at, I'm going to move that up about an eighth of an inch, one inch, and one and a half inch. You want the holes to be about half of an inch apart. I just made little pencil marks. I'm going to bring in my eighth inch hole punch, which again is retired, but I'm sure most of you have them. And I'm just going to punch those little pencil marks. Can I even see the other one? There it is. You'll want to decide the space between the hole punches depending on the width of your ribbon if you're going to try this. And I just have about a six inch piece of ribbon here. This is the Cherry Cobbler and gold, right? Cherry cobbler and, col and gold metallic ribbon. It's half of an inch in width. Really, really pretty ribbon. 
So here's how I make these. I'm gonna feed both ends. Well, you could do it either way, but I'm gonna take one end through the front, the other end through the other front. So those two ends are going to the back. Now this ribbon, you have to um, be patient and be kind to it because it frays, okay? So we've got that. Those are fed through the front to the back, okay? And then we're just gonna crisscross so I like to pull this tail out of the way to kind of free up the hole there. And I'm gonna take the end of the other one and push it through to the front. Now, we are live and this is gonna give me a hard time. I can feel it. Don't worry about it fraying too much because we're gonna trim it off anyways. And then we've done that one, right? Then we're gonna push the other side through to the front. We're making a little faux bow. And then all you do is on the front, just kind of zhuzh it the way you want it. See that? So on the back, it looks nice as well, but nobody's gonna see that anyways. Look at this mess I made. Normally I'd use my lint roller, but we'll just brush that on the floor. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take my paper snips and totally up to you how you wanna cut the ends here. I was chuckling to myself earlier. I don't remember the way that my mom had cut the ends, so I'm just going to do it this way. We're going to kind of cut them both up in some different, like that. Okay, really cute. Gives the card a little bit of sparkle and shine. And then I'm going to grab five dimensionals, so one in each corner. And this pack of dimensionals is giving me a hard time. One, two, three, four, five. One in each corner and then one in the center, like that. Get the backs off, bring the card front back, and then we are going to just center that in that square. It'd be an eighth of an inch of the evening evergreen on all sides. Okay, like so. And then, again, that three quarter inch by four and a quarter inch I'm making a mess over here. It's being all organized and I have everything in a tray over here, but the tray isn't big enough. <laughs> so the banners pick a punch. Obviously you could also cut these with um, your paper snips or use the tailored tag punch. That's a great punch to get little banner ends as well. <laughs> She's still reading. So I am feeding it into the banner end here, this one. And because I cut it just under three quarters of an inch, it fits in that three quarter inch tray just perfectly. So I'll punch that on both ends, get our banner ends going on there. And then I don't, Donna, um, it depends on the ribbon because this one has the metallic thread in it. I probably wouldn't recommend using a lighter to the ends. You could use fray check. I think that's what that's called. I don't actually have any fray check um, to test it out with. I usually take a lighter to the ends of my ribbon, but with this, I think with the metallic, you'll have some sparkles on your hands. <laughs> so I would be careful doing that. But as long as you don't mess with it, it shouldn't fray after you've trimmed it. it and, but if you do mess with it, it will fray. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp this. Hold your breath and hope we get it straight. Yay! And then I'm just going to glue this to the card front. I'm just going to put glue, easier to put the glue on the card panel, just right in between those bows of holly, or bows of holly, bows of evergreen. Bows of holly. It is bow, that's right. Now that I remember that's how I sing it, bows of holly, but bows of evergreen. So I'm just centering it and I can kind of slide it to the left or right if I need to, making sure there's the same space from the banner ends. And there is our evening evergreen elegance Christmas card. Really pretty with this row of evergreen trees, some stamping on the inside, and a really fun corner flip. <laughs> you might be able to put a tiny bit of Tombow. That's true too, Nan, that's a good suggestion. Clear nail polish, perfect Sue, I love that idea. 
See, I love the hive mind. You guys are awesome. Corner flip, fancy fold card. So there is that project. Let's jump into the quick and easy 3D card. And all you need for this is a piece of evening ever, well, a piece of cardstock, any color you like. But for this project, I'm using evening evergreen that measures four and a quarter by five and three eighths. So not quite a quarter sheet, just an eighth of an inch shorter than that. Adhesive remover, Sally. Stampin' Up used to carry this. Mine is actually cut in half. Hold on. <laughs> I cut it in half to give me more ends, but it's a square adhesive remover like this. You can find it on Amazon. I'm not sure if I have it linked on my favorites page or not, but it's basically just rubber, and you can see where I've picked up adhesive here. And once the adhesive has dried, you can kind of rub the adhesive off. You could use this one or... need to organize my drawer. The other one, which I do have linked on my favorites page, this is actually an ink eraser. It's got a little bit of sand in it, but this works to get adhesive up as well. So that's what I mean by the adhesive remover. All right, so four and a quarter by five and three eighths. Bring in the Simply Scored. And we are gonna score this along the four and a quarter inch side at one and a quarter one and seven eighths, three and one eighth, and three and three quarters. So one and a quarter, one and seven eighths, three and one eighth, three and three quarters. I'm gonna turn it clockwise, a quarter of a turn, and score at five eighths. And five eighths is just one eighth past half of an inch. Next, I'm gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines. Oops. Like so, I've got a template. So I'm gonna start by cutting up all the vertical, I've got this in portrait, okay? Cutting up each of the vertical score lines, stopping at the horizontal score line. We'll do all of those. And I'm just cutting right down the middle of the score line. I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn. I'm gonna come in and miter cut and remove this corner here, like so. Remove that. And then just do a little miter cut up here at the top. This is our little half inch section here along the right. And that, well, now we also need to miter cut on the tab. So I'm going to fold the big sections out of the way and come in. And when I say miter cut, I'm just doing an angled cut. That's to prevent any of the edges getting in our way when we put our box together. All right, just like that, okay? Now we will be doing hole punches, but I want to put my row of evergreen trees down first. But this template, when I share this to my blog next week, will be available there for you to use for reference, okay? I'm hearing pitter-patter of little feet. <laughs> All right, so we've got our row of evergreen trees. Now I am going to place this, I'm kind of dry fitting it. This is our front panel here. So if I turn it this way where I have the half inch at the top, this middle wider section is gonna be the front. And I actually want the trees, I want the bottom of the box to be on the right and the top of our box to be on the left. And what I can do here is I'm just gonna start with that edge right down there along the bottom. So I wanna go with glue all the way up to sort of halfway of this third to last tree. So I just kind of am eyeballing it so I don't get too much glue. Oh, it's not cooperating. There we go. And then just about halfway on that third to last tree and then just a little bit of glue. Okay, now, again, we're gonna line up 
the edge right along that score line and kind of slide that into place. Flip it over and press from the back. And then we can come in and just trim off the excess with our paper snips. I love that. I love working with this evergreen border punch. Now we can punch holes and I'm just gonna use the detailed trio punch for that. And we're gonna be punching holes. Let me show you on the template. The holes are gonna go in the center of the two wider sections. So on the detailed trio punch, there is a little center marker here that you can see from this um, looking down angle. And I'm just gonna line up that line centered between the score lines here. It does not have to be perfect, but it's pretty easy to get lined up. And then centered from the left edge between the left edge and this score line. So we got those two hole punches there, okay? All right, now we can start to put the box together. I'm gonna flip it over, fold on the second score line from the left and apply liquid glue to the half inch tab here. You can use tear and tape as well. And then I can fold on the first score line from the right and just press that into place till it adheres. All right, so again, this is our back. That's where the seam is, but it's also the side that doesn't have the trees. So I'm gonna fold that front flap out of the way, tuck in the side flaps and put a little bit of glue on those. And I realized I didn't click start collecting comments. Hold on one second, because <laughs> I want to do prize patrol. Hashtag, pardon me for the uh, keyboard and the, <laughs> I know you guys are already putting it in there. All right, so glue on the flap and the, the front flap and the two tabs. Fold the bottom. Yeah, if you already put in Prize Patrol, it is already calculating. There's already 34 of you that have put in Prize Patrol. But don't worry, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I will share the details in a few minutes. All right, so let's grab our Nutty Buddy. I like to put one in here and to just give some leverage, just to press the glue from the inside. I've got something in there for leverage. All right, bringing back our beautiful Cherry Cobbler and gold metallic ribbon. Actually, we need to make the tag first because we've got to have the tag to put the ribbon on. So I'm going to grab a scrap piece of basic white and I'm grabbing the other sort of inside sentiment from the set. And it says, it's friends like you that make this season so wonderful. We're going to stamp that in real red. Oh, cherry cobbler. <laughs> I'm on a real red kick for the holidays, but it's cherry cobbler. I'm just gonna, this is just a scrap piece of basic white. And I grabbed the amazing tailor-made tags dies because this fits really well and creates a tag in one fell swoop. And we're gonna cut the sentiment out using that. I've got a couple of pieces of post-it tape sitting over here from the other half of the strip that I cut for the paper trimmer. And then I'm just going to kind of hold that in place and we'll run that through the stamp and cut and emboss machine. Now I want to show the other piece we have here. I've already cut a trio out. I only need one of them, but that is sort of like a, a paper reinforcement. Let me show you what that looks like just to save some time tonight, but it's that piece out of Evening Evergreen and I'll show you how that fits. All right, bringing in the big boss. I'm just gonna run that through. I know what I forgot to remind you of, the starter kit special that's only $75 right now for the starter kit. And the stamp and cut and emboss machine is a great option for that kit. Uh, you can get that machine for only $75 in a starter kit. Plus 
something like a pack of rhinestones or pearls to round out the $125 in product that you can choose and just get it all for 75 ships for free, which is an even more of a discount. Um, so it's a great deal. I'd love to have you on my team. So we've got the evening evergreen piece and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the back. And then the flat edge goes up to the flat edge of the tag. Zoom in a little bit for you. And I'm just going to kind of slide that right over the, with the liquid glue, you've got a little bit of wiggle room there. But how cute is that? I love that. A little reinforcement for the tag. I went the right direction that time. <laughs> All right, so now this is ready. I'm going to feed it first through. I've got it on the spool. I'm going to feed it through the tag first. Then I'm going to feed it through the front hole and then through the back hole. We're going to kind of get this ready for the Nutty Buddy. And just kind of pull it through. That's probably long enough. All right, so grab the Nutty Buddy. Here's my tip here. I want you to pull the ribbon and make it sort of flat on either side of the Nutty Buddy so that it kind of stays that way while you push it down into the box. Just keeps your ribbon nicer that way. And I'm just gonna push it all the way in. Now the end of the Nutty Buddy, that plastic I like to just kind of tuck in. And then we got plenty of ribbon here, so I'm actually going to trim it off the spool about here. I can pull this a little bit more. All right, so I've got a hot mess of a bag of the Simply Elegant trim. Um, I'm just going to grab a piece of this off the spool. This is the gold. This is also in the annual catalog. It comes um, in gold and silver together. It's a combo pack. And I'm going to grab my reverse tweezers here because I do want to kind of hold the ribbon together while I tie this. Just going to kind of pinch that together. Got the elegant trim here. And tie a bow. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to pull a bow, but then I'm also going to take the reverse tweezers and hold on to that knot as well. Or I should say I'm going to pull a knot and again get my bow started. Because the elegant trim has a tendency to want to come unraveled on you until you can pull it tight. So remove the reverse tweezers then tighten that bow knot. Just zhuzh it if you need to. How I did the knot. Um, like where you tied it. It wasn't... Oh. As far as on the ribbon, yeah. let me zoom a bit. So I just held the two ends of ribbon and then basically tied a bow around the ribbon. See that? And that just keeps the nutty buddy in between the ribbon. And then when, let me trim off the ends here. So you tied it on the strip wizard? Yes. Then when we pull this out, the nutty buddy comes with it and the tag. But isn't that so cute? Oh, I love it. So now we can just trim off the ends here of the ribbon. Again, you might want to use fray check or clear nail polish or liquid glue, but I'm going to just kind of pull them apart a little bit so they look more like bunny ears. And there we have our, what am I calling this? I made a note, the Evergreen Elegance Nutty Buddy Slider Box. Really cute way to give a little treat to a friend. Paired with this awesome Christmas card, the corner flip card. Love those two together using the evening or evergreen elegance. I keep wanting to say evening because of evening evergreen, but evergreen elegance, which is this awesome stamp set paired with the evergreen border punch. This comes bundled together at $40.50. You save 10% when you bundle them. But this is a great bundle to have in your stash for classic Christmas cards. Again, that's in the annual catalog in case you missed that. 
So those are those two projects. Why don't we jump into a little bit of Prize Patrol? I'm looking at the time here. We're coming up on the hour here. So Prize Patrol, I've got two stamp sets to give away, plus a handmade card for my stash. So I've got the Amaryllis Abloom Host Set. This is only available to purchase with stamp and rewards, which are earned on orders of $150 or more. So Amaryllis Abloom, and then I'm gonna give away my cards from last week's live stream. So let me go ahead and share with you how you can enter. If I can go back to my screen here. All right, so to enter to, <coughs> I have a tickle in my throat. To enter for your chance to win, US residents only, I only ship product within the US. Hashtag prize patrol, make sure there's no spaces, it's spelled correctly, and you include the hashtag. That will put you in, uh, in as, as an entry to win. You only get one entry even if you type it in multiple times. So save yourself the time and just type it in once. And then I will um, randomly choose two winners. I'm gonna give you a few minutes to get that typed into the comments. Uh, so while we're doing that, let me quick switch back over. A couple of reminders again. We've got um, the last chance sales coming up on December 1st. Don't forget about this month's host code and the host code free gifts for orders of $50 or more. Stamp and Storage got, has some wonderful Black Friday sales again through November 29th, 15% off the whole store and free shipping on orders over $100. Then there's some Black Friday, there's a midnight special and some doorbusters, and there is more coming, but I can't share what else is coming. So um, not until those, you'll see those pop on my Facebook business page. I'll share details about those upcoming sales. Um, but I love Black Friday season because I, I haven't grabbed any deals yet, but I've got my eyes on a few things. So um, let's go ahead. I'm going to share my screen. And we're going to, let me get this off the screen here. We're going to pick winner number one. So good luck to you. Peggy Keller, congratulations. Oh, I started to misspell that. Peggy, congratulations. To claim your prize patrol, you just wanna come over to thepaperpixie.com slash prize patrol and put in your address there for me and I'll get the uh, stamp set and card shipped out to you. Let's go ahead and choose winner number two. Draw again. This is always fun to watch your names and hence smiling faces show up on my screen. Lucy McFarland, yay! Congratulations. I think we got some new winners that haven't won before. So congratulations to Lucy and Peggy. All right, let me come back over here. Yay, congratulations. Um, if you'll, you know, submit or claim your prize patrol at the paperpixie.com slash prize patrol, get your happy mail into the mail. It'll likely go out Friday since tomorrow is a holiday. But I want to thank you all so much for joining me this week. I want to wish you many, many blessings for those of you who are celebrating Thanksgiving this week. I hope you can find some time, some quality time to spend with your family and loved ones. Maybe some time to eat some wonderful pies. I will be eating pumpkin pie for sure. And we are doing a turkey breast instead of a full turkey because someday I'll share the story with you. My husband broke his finger on the turkey. What was it, two years ago now? Three years ago, probably. Anyways, long story. We're just doing a turkey breast, no bones, because we got to protect my husband's finger bones, right? <laughs> so anyways, I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I appreciate each and every one of you. You are one of my many blessings. Thanks for joining me live tonight. And I will see you next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for episode 219. Take good care, everybody. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving.